Right, so right on time. Um, next talk is from Andrea. He's going to talk about uh, linear regression done in a private way. Exactly. So is this all right? Is the volume OK? Yes. OK. So I'm Adria Gascon. I'll be talking about uh, our work on privacy preserving uh, linear regression. And this is a joint work with uh, Philip Shopman, who's in the audience, uh, Borja Baya, who I have to thank for some contributions to, to the slides, Mariana Raikova, Jack Turner, Sami Zawur, and David Evans. Uh, we come from a variety of institutions. So I'll start with the motivation for, for, for the work. So consider the scenario where you want to uh, predict the outcome of a certain treatment, and you have some medical data uh, about a set of patients. But not, not only that, but you also have some census data and some financial data about that uh, population, and this data is held by, by different parties. Okay? So this is uh, commonly referred to as the vertically partitioned setting. Uh, as opposed to the horizontally partitioned setting, for, but for these both settings, uh, for both settings, there are similar problems uh, to the one that we deal with here at ICE. So hence, we have these parties that want to jointly learn a model of the on the union of their data sets, but they cannot share their private data with each other, uh, maybe for ethical reasons or for regulatory reasons. Uh, and the assumption that uh, we use in our, in our work is that the parameters of the model will be received by all parties, so they have the, an incentive for, for like putting their data together and getting a more accurate model. And parties can engage in an online secure communications. And we will also use external parties that help in the computation, but uh, do, not, uh, do not learn anything about the data, of course. So the easy solution for, for this problem is just to rely on a, on a trusted party that uh, that gets all the data, computes the model, then sends the model back to the, to the parties. The parties don't learn anything about each other's data. Then it removes the data and tries to forget everything it learned uh, along the way. Uh, so the problem with this assumption is that some, sometimes it, it is difficult to enforce. Uh, it introduces a single point of failure. Yes, if the data is very valuable, there might be weak incentives for, for acting as a trusted party. And you, you, it require, requires an agreement between, between all the parties. So this is a useful, useful assumption, but uh, unrealistic. And the question is whether it might be, it can be simulated. We're in the MPC session, so you know it can. So here, MPC comes to the rescue. So we've been already talking about this. We know that uh, any functionality, any polynomial functionality f can be evaluated in a, in a privacy-preserving way, where you have different parties providing private inputs in a way that uh, only the output of the computation is learned uh, by the parties and nothing else. So we know that's, that's the case. The problem is that for machine learning applications, the generic algorithms like garbage circuits or, or uh, GMW and so on do not, do not really scale. So we have to come up with a dedicated custom like algorithm, algorithm that use uh, several techniques to, to gain scalability, scalability for these applications where, for example, so in our examples you have like a one millions of, of records and, and hundreds of, uh, of features. So these excises are, are huge. So that brings us to our contribution, which is a, like a system for doing linear regression in a privacy preserving way in the vertically partitioned data set setting. Uh, so the features of our system is that uh, it does scale to millions of records and hundreds of dimensions in less than one hour, which is quite good. Uh, it has formal privacy guarantees, and uh, we have an open source implementation that, uh, that you can use. So as I said, we combine several tools like garbage circuit, WBS transfer, this uh, multiplicative triple uh, generation that uh, we saw before, and secret sharing. Uh, we implement uh, efficient protocols for secure uh, inner product and also a variant of uh, gradient descent that is robust to fixed point encodings. And that's useful and hence it's uh, suitable for, for M uh, MPC implementations. So let's see what, what is this uh, rich regression, what is that uh, we implement in our system. So as I said, we have a data set that is vertically partitioned uh, among several parties. Let's see, uh, we only have two for, for simplicity. So this X 
is just a bunch of columns x1 held by party 1 followed by a bunch of columns x2 held by party 2 and then y is the column we want to predict on which let's assume is held by party 1. So all we need to do in, in rich regression is very simple is solve this optimization problem that uh, turns out that has a closed form solution so all we have to do is just the parties have to compute this uh, equation construct this equation and solve it it's very simple so this uh, this gives us this gives us this very nice split of the problem where we have an aggregation phase where the parties compute a matrix a and a vector b and a solving phase where they have to solve this system of equations and obtain the parameters of the model theta Okay, so this is the computation, it's very simple and this is all, all we need to do. So it's important to remark here that the input for the aggregation phase depends on the, both on the number of uh, records, which is of the order of millions, and the number of features, which is of the order of the hundreds, while the solving phase, in the solving phase, this uh, have dimension d times d and d. So this is independent of the number of records, so it's important to have a very fast aggregation phase. So initially the aggregation phase is going to be the the bottleneck. So the observation here, or the useful observation, is that for even if you have n parties, for uh, to for the aggregation phase that is computing uh, the this uh, this equation in a secret shared form, all you need to do is uh, a bunch of secure inner product computations. So you can all the aggregation phase reduces to uh, computing. Uh, the value of inner products between vectors held by different parties, private vectors by, held by different parties. So we implemented uh, two efficient protocols for, for inner product. You can see the trade-offs in the, in the paper. And then for the solving phase, all we need is a protocol for solving a linear system of equations. Okay, so let's look at, uh, let's get an overview of the protocol. So as I said, uh, at least in this version of the protocol we have several in the paper, we rely on two external parties, the crypto provider and the computing provider, that will help in the, in the computation while learning nothing about the, about the data. And the assumption, the important assumption here is that these guys, the crypto provider and the computing provider, are, are non-colluding. Okay? So this is sometimes referred in MPC as the two-server model. So, so this goes as follows. The, Crypto provider distributes some correlated randomness exactly uh, along the lines of what you what you were uh, explaining, and then the data providers engage in a bunch of uh, inner pro product protocols to construct a narrative share of the um, system that has to be solved, and then in a solving phase, the system of equations is solved by the crypto provider and the computing provider using a garbled circuits protocol. Okay, so the crypto provider will be the garbler, the computing provider is the evaluator who gets uh, inputs in a secure way from the data providers and then evaluates the circuit, returns encryption of the solution, the, the parameter of the model, the parameters of the model, and then the parties can decrypt the, the model with the help of, of the crypto provider. So this is it. and. Uh, in the solving phase, so all I said is that uh, we need to we, we use Galbraith circuits to solve a system of linear equation, equations. So all you need to know about Galbraith circuits at this point is that uh, the functionality has to be represented using a Boolean circuit. Okay. So the first observation is that inverting A is not a good idea in general. Or, uh, so there are other like uh, matrix factorization algorithms that are better than that. Among those, the ones, the ones that are based on pivoting uh, are, not, uh, are not a good choice because they are not data oblivious. They, they make decisions based on data and, and that uh, has a bad uh, uh, circuit representation since all these uh, choices have to be represented in the circuit. A good choice uh, instead is this uh, Koleski decomposition which works in this setting because A is uh, positive semi-definite and this was the choice uh, done by Nikola Enko at all in previous work. The only drawback of, of Koleski is that uh, it doesn't really scale to high dimensional settings, you know, like settings where you have more than 100 features because accuracy decreases and the algorithm is, is exact, so you have to wait for the whole execution of the, the algorithm is cubic, okay? 
So our proposal, so we thought, okay, let's go for an iterative method uh, that will give us a, a, an improved solution at every iteration, and uh, in this way we'll trade, you know, running time for accuracy. And these algorithms are quite stable, so that should be good enough, but so the problem is that uh, in, in, in garbage circuits, we cannot do floating point computations yet. We are not quite uh, there yet. And to give you a sense of where we are, we are somewhere in the, in the 60s, okay? So this is like computation in the clear, and this is computation in MPC, okay? So, but we are like getting there. And um, so what happens when you implement your, your uh, CGD or the textbook CGD using a fixed point arithmetic is that you lose the nice convergence properties of the algorithm in floating point. So in, uh, in, our, in our paper, we show how to fix that and propose a fixed point CG, a version of CGD that behaves, that recovers the, these good convergence properties and is as accurate as uh, the, a floating point implementation, uh, but of course faster in MPC. Uh, so we run an algorithm in a bunch of uh, uh, real data sets from the UCI repository. And so the results are in the paper, but I wanted to highlight, uh, highlight a few things here. Uh, so if you look at uh, this data set, where you have uh, 50,000 uh, records and 280 features, if when we run uh, CGD, it takes like 30 minutes, while Koleski with 32 bits uh, takes uh, um, close to one hour, and it has less accuracy, while the CGD version is as accurate as uh, the floating point version. So CGD is indeed better for a uh, bigger uh, uh, number of features. On the other hand, after having uh, implemented a very fast uh, uh, aggregation phase, our bottleneck now is in the uh, solving phase. So for example, here, an example with 300, 384 uh, features takes close to four hours uh, with CGD and 12 hours for, for Koleski, while a huge uh, data set with uh, four million uh, records, but only 16 features can be solved in all cases uh, by in, in, in less than two minutes. Also, these numbers uh, are already better than uh, what I'm showing here, but uh, along the same line. So, uh, in many cases, 32 bits are enough to do good accuracy. So, this is uh, for the task of uh, solving a linear system, for extracting the, the not, sorry, this is for the task of uh, prediction, not the task of uh, solving a linear system. So, results for that also in terms of uh, different conditions. Uh, so the conditions, uh, sorry, matrices that are well, uh, better and worse conditioned are also in the paper. So we analyze all the, all the components of our, our solution in the paper. So to conclude, uh, we have a full system that is accurate and fast, is available as open source, so you can, you can use it. There's already some people using it, so we're also very nice people that would help if there's any problem, so go ahead and use it. Uh, Scalability uh, requires hybrid or custom MPC protocols, especially machine learning applications. And um, we propose this variant of CGD that has other applications than, than just uh, linear regression as it can be used in, in other machine learning tasks. So in terms of ex extensions, we, we like to really like uh, extend this system that we, we put together, especially as it is open source. So there are a number of things that can be done. Uh, distributed noise generation is a, is, a, is a very interesting extension that we like to consider. And in particular, something that I really like to do is to implement uh, really nice tricks that were presented uh, earlier this year at SMP for this same problem, but uh, by Mohassel et al. For future work, um, we like to consider other models, but the grand goal here is to construct a library of reusable ML components, something like a, you know, like a privacy-preserving NumPy, that'd be amazing, to, to complete the whole data science pipeline. So I'm not claiming here that one can do linear regression 
or the whole the, the whole pipeline in, in a privacy preserving way because you know you like tuning parameters and and all that is something tricky so the machine learning is, is often a feedback loop where you just try something get results and doing that in a secure way is not is not clear how to do it so that's it and I'll be happy to take any questions.